to the office. Um, she used to be in my daughter's room, but she moved away. So now it's got my computer in it and uh, some printers. <laughs> so, um, so we went to the store and we picked up a few things that I was out of so I could do this video for you. And I just wanted to highlight the um, top five things that I usually go for when in journal making. And I use, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use this stuff probably 90, 95% of the time. Not every single journal is made the exact same way. So, so there's that. But, um, but I just wanted to share with you some of the tried and true products that I have found and I, I really appreciate consistency. And so while I really like to um, try out new products, Sometimes if I don't get the result I want right away, instead of messing around with it, I just go back to what I already know. Change is hard. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys just some of the stuff that, that I really, really like. So first off, um, you saw me in the store buy some uh, instant coffee. And the reason why I go for um, the instant coffee I used to brew cups and cups and cups and cups and cups of coffee or tea to, to dye papers with, um, but it was just so time consuming and it was hard to get a consistent color or, um, and of course tea and coffee both have different, different color tones that they come out with, but you can get instant coffee or instant tea fairly inexpensively. They even have it at like the dollar stores. And I mean, this is like the Walmart brand. Don't, don't get the good stuff unless it's on sale and it's cheaper. Um, but it's nice to be able just to mix this in with some water, uh, dip some paper. If it's too dark, I add more water. If it's too light, I just add a little bit more. Um, I've used instant coffee and instant tea. I, I like them both. Um, if you don't like the smell of coffee, go with the instant tea and see if you like that better. So try it out and tell me what you like. Um, it might save you some time. Some of you probably already do this. Let's see, um, adhesive. Um, oh, the hair, sorry. I think I slept weird last night, so, and I did nothing. Um, so adhesive, um, I like, these are both made by Beacon. One is Fabri-Tac and one is Fabri-Fix. The Fabri-Fix I get, you can get it at Hobby Lobby and the Fabri-Tac is at Joann's. Now, I don't know the difference between these two. It's like they're, they're like the exact same thing. But so I'm wondering if maybe the company, the, Be the Beacon company, um, basically packages the same adhesive for different companies and gives it different names. So for like, you know, exclusivity, that's what I'm thinking. It's not cheap. So use a coupon. Uh, I mean, 10.99 for an eight ounce bottle. That's like, it's crazy. Um, I should have bought stock in this company before, before I started making books. Um, yeah, so you use a coupon. What I like about these adhesives is that they are acetone based and not water based. So what that means for, for me is that when you use a water based adhesive on paper, that water can expand the paper in that spot, which will make your little wrinkles and, and it makes it harder for the paper to lay down flat because that water expands those fibers in the paper and then you've got ripples and bubbles and stuff. And it doesn't always happen, but it can. So to, to kind of skirt around that, <laughs> um, I, use, I use this and this works on fabric and paper. It works great on paper. Um, and then that way it doesn't create the little bubbles that you get from a water-based adhesive. And so I do have water-based adhesives and I do use them for sure. Um, but this is great for um, if you're gonna be gluing on um, lace trims or little bits of textiles and that kind of thing. This stuff works really, really well for that kind of thing. And um, I really like it. So 
I even use this like on just on paper, just just to glue paper to paper, not just fabric to paper or you know some kind of a trim to paper. The only thing I don't use this on is for like metal embellishments because um, it won't. I mean, it might hold them for a while, but I, I'm not sure if it would if it would be like a permanent adhesive. So for metal, I usually use either a an adhesive that is made just for metal or um, like glossy accents or something like that. So that's what I use for like metal embellishments if I'm going to be gluing those down. Um, let's see. Mm. Matte Mod Pond. Um, I use a lot of this stuff because, well, I think we all do, right? Um, this is a great sealer. It is water based. So you guys know that it can warp things. So you just got to be careful um, if what you're painting this on. Um, so if you don't, the key, and this is like impossible, but the key to get something not to warp if you're going to put Mod Podge on it is to put an equal amount of Mod Podge on one side and the other so that they dry straight. If you have too much Mod Podge on one side or the other, it'll pull one way or the other and that's where you get your warping. So, I mean, how can you ever get it even? Because one side of, if it's like chipboard or something, could be more porous than the other side. And so even though you're really careful to like measure out two tablespoons and brush on two tablespoons on each side, that's not going to uh, guarantee that you're not gonna have some warpage because because it will soak in differently on on either side. So so I don't use Mod Podge for everything. I mean, obviously, um, because of the warp the warp factor. Um, so you just have to be aware of that. But it's great stuff, and I I mean, as you can see, I buy it by the you know the huge container. So I do use it. Um, let's see. Um, I love 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 inks so whether it is the tim holtz distress ink like in this little pad um i have these little um daubers of distress inks and i don't think he sells them this way anymore i don't think you can get them in the daubers i think they're only like in um spray bottles now uh so i'm hoarding what i have of these because i really i really 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 like it because it's got the um it's got the little pad that it's I don't know it just makes it easy I'm not sure why they discontinued it this way why Tim why um because it was great but I'm sure if I was a handy enough person I probably could refill it Move that hopefully that'll do you see the little, um, that little black lip? I bet you could just carefully pry that off and re refill it just to use the dauber. What do you think? Um, because you could get something like walnut ink like this one that I get at, um, that I get at Joann's and this is in a spray ball too and I love this stuff. It's, it's inexpensive, especially with a coupon. Um, I think it's like seven something without a coupon, but if you get a 50% off coupon, then it's, it's, it's decently, you know, affordable and it's nice and dark. It's archival, it's acid free, and um, it lasts a long time. You get a lot of use out of this. So um, I will let you know if we can refill these. If you guys have some, oh, sorry. If you guys have some of these laying around, um, don't throw them away. Maybe we can refill those with something else. Another thing I like is this. This is a matte clear sealer. This one happens to be Rust-Oleum, which is an enamel. And I know like Mod Podge makes a matte sealer. I think they might have gloss too, but they make a matte sealer that is acrylic. So these are great because um, if you have something that you don't want a big, thick, heavy coat of Mod Podge on, but you still want to be able to seal it and protect it somewhat, then this is your guy. Um, this is, it's not expensive. I think this can was three and change. So it's, and it lasts a long time. So, cause you don't have to put a lot on. It's not, 
uh, it's not, um, it, it's really nice and sturdy and you don't want to put a lot on because then you'll get runs and that kind of thing. So just, you know, be, be easy on it. But um, this stuff is great. I love this stuff. And there are, like I said, there's different kinds. There's acrylics and enamels and there's different brands and stuff. So, you know, you can choose your favorite uh, when it comes to that. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention about the Fabrifix and the Fabri-Tac. If, if you've never used this before and you are like really super sensitive to smell, um, this might not be your adhesive because it's acetone based and so it kind of smells like fingernail polish remover. Well, it smells a lot like fingernail polish remover. So, um, so be wary. Or if you just got your nails done, <laughs> don't go using this. It'll, it'll, just, it'll just take off all your fingernail polish. So, so be careful with that too. Um, because it's kind of stinky until it dries. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it, guys. <sighs> Thank you for going along with the journey today. This was just kind of five things just off the top of my head that I use, like I said, 95% of the time. I just go for these things because of the consistency, and I just um, I trust them to give me the results that I want. There's also gummy bears, um, you know, they help, they help. The Haribo company has gotten me through some, some really rough times. And um, I wanna thank Haribo and their bears for assisting me in my work. Um, that should be number one. <laughs> okay guys, I'm gonna, gonna chew on your faces. Hope everybody is having a great day and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.